welcome. Good morning. Glad to have you with us. Welcome to Bradley United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Steve McPeak. I'm the pastor here. And if you're visiting with us for the first time, we'd like to say welcome and glad to have you with us this morning. Also, for those that are watching online, we'd like to say welcome and glad to have you with us uh, as well. And just hope that you feel free to worship as the Spirit leads and guides you in the service today. Um, a couple of announcements. Um, our charge conference will be held next Sunday, October 2nd, at 2 o'clock at New Palestine United Methodist Church. Uh, of course, the uh, ad board is, uh, the, the administrative board is supposed to be there, and, and also you are invited to come and participate as well if you'd like to see how a charge conference is ran and, and, and worship, spend time in worship. They're more of a worship time now than they are business, so it's more of a, a celebration of what the churches are doing rather than just rubber stamping everything. So uh, if you haven't been in a while, I invite you to come and, and, and uh, experience uh, the Charge Conference October 2nd at New Palestine. Um, also, uh, I'd like to invite you, if you are uh, with us today, to sign the pew pads that are in the pews, if you would, so we can have a record of your being with us today. If you have a prayer request, there are new cards in the pews that you can put down a prayer request, or you can put down a celebration, something that God has done in your life that you would like to share, a joy rather than a concern, and we will lift those up as well. Um, also, I'd like to uh, preview, show you a, 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 some people call them a commercial, but I'm going to call it a preview, uh, of our upcoming worship uh, series that, that we'll, we will be doing in October for four Sundays in October. And so I'm going to ask them to play that video now. sermon series for October, uh, and you're invited to come. If you'd like to invite somebody to come with you, uh, please do. Let them know what we're doing and invite them to come along with you. Um, also, I have one more uh, announcement that I'd like to share with you. Uh, I shared this with our prayer team here at the church, and I want to share it with you as the congregation that I'm asking for you to pray for me um, as the congregation, uh, each one of you to pick one day out of the month, just one day, and pray for me specifically and my family. Um, I just, and, and I'll be praying for you as well, but I need your prayers um, as I lead and guide the congregation. And I take this seriously. This is something that God has called me to do, and I can't do it without God leading me and guiding me. And I need your prayers. And so there's a sign up sheet in there in the parlor or the fellowship hall, um, and um, for you to sign up just one day a week, or a, a month, so they'll, I need 31 people to commit to praying for me. So some of you, if you get the 31st, you, don't, you won't have to pray for me as often. <laughs> so if, 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 you're, if you don't like to pray as often, and, but you still want to pray, the 31st, go grab it, um, and you can pray for me on the 31st of each month. But I'm asking for your prayers. Is, is that okay with you? Can, would you respond to that as, to, to pray for me as I lead you and guide you here? I, I appreciate that. Um, and I will pray for you as well. Yes, Sue. No, no. Yeah, if all the spots are taken and you, and you still want to pray for me. Sign up on one of those de other days uh, and double up. That'd be great. Tag team, you know, <laughs> swipe hands. I'll take all the prayer I can get. So thank you so much for that. But that's, that's just my, that's what I'm asking is, is if you would just take one day out of, the, out of the month and specifically pray for me and my family, my wife and I, I would appreciate that. Okay. The grace of God be with you. And also with you. 
Let us worship God. Please stand. Please join me in the call to worship. Jesus said, I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. Let, Let us act justly. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. Let, Let us love tenderly. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Let, Let us walk humbly with our, our God. God. May we see Christ in one another. That, that we may be healers and peacemakers in Christ's name.
for the children's message. You can be seated. Oh, we don't have any children today. Okay. Well, you know what happens next, don't you? We ask you to stand for the reading of God's word. Okay? <laughs> and if you are unable <laughs> to stand, you can remain seated, but please stand for the reading of God's word. <laughs> Our lesson today comes from Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus at his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip his, the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus, in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
Can you guys name the name that tune? <laughs> Swing low. Oh, there was two. I, I didn't recognize the first one. I recognize the second one. Swing low. Very well done. They're also looking for new members. If you are interested in playing bells, talk to Jane. I'm sure she would be glad to uh, get you uh, set up uh, with some bells and, and joining the bell choir. So if you feel called to do that and would like to enjoy having fun with ringing bells, see Jane after the service, I'm sure. She'd be glad to talk to you about it. Well, I just have to say it's good to be here with you in the house of the Lord this morning. It's been a, uh, uh, quite a week, hasn't it, with everything going on and all the stuff that's happening in our world and happening in our communities and in our lives and seeing God at work, seeing how God is instrumental in helping us get through difficult times, helping us celebrate good times, and, and just being part of our lives. And recognizing the movement of the God Spirit is something that we celebrate and we, we testify to as we come and gather on Sunday morning. We, we come to give a testimony of how good God is. And how God is working in our lives. And so this morning, I just want to say, I, I, I'm just glad to be here with you this morning. I'm glad to see all your smiling faces and, and that you're here and, and you're sounding really good singing this morning. And God is good. And all the time. Amen. You know, um, if I only knew then what I know now. I would have... Have you ever said those words? I think most of us have said those in our lifetime. Have you ever regretted any of your actions that you've taken in the past and had to go and apologize to somebody or ask forgiveness from somebody and say, I'm sorry? Have your eyes ever been open to a new perspective? which changed everything about how you judged reality previously? The classic comments I hear go something like this. If I knew then what I know now, I would not have seen, I, I would not have been so shy as a child. Or if I knew then, or if I would not have cared so much what everyone else thought about me, or I would have spent more time with my mom before she died if I'd only known, or I would have chosen a different vocation, or I would have, and you fill in the blank. What are some of the regrets that you've had after you've experienced some things in your life after you've experienced difficulties or experienced different perspectives from different people how have you been changed in your thinking in your living or even in your heart so that is one theme alive in this story the rich young man is protesting that if only he had more understanding than he now has, things would have been different. You see, the, the rich man was living in his home and, and he was enjoying his life. He was going to his clubs and he was playing golf every day, you know, and he was doing the things that he enjoyed doing with the friends that he enjoyed being with. And all the while, it says that this poor man, Lazarus, was outside of his gate, which is the gate that he used to leave his property, right? So this rich man passed Lazarus 
every day. And he paid no attention to him. He was invisible. He just didn't care. He, he, he probably paid more attention to his dogs than he did to Lazarus, who was outside his gate. Who is in our communities that we just walk by who are invisible to us, that we just pay no attention to? Who may be sitting in the grass on the side of the road, on a park bench, and we just ignore them as if they're not there. Well, this is what the, the rich man did. And he says, if I'd have known anything differently, I would have changed the way that I treated this person. If I'd have known I'd have been suffering <laughs> like I am, I'd have been treating him differently. You know, an, another common refrain at the heart of this gospel reading, and which I know well because I have so often said it myself, is... Why didn't he or she or they do something about it? What were they thinking? Why did that parent turn their back, if only for a second, and allow their child to wander away? How could that friend not see such an obvious sign of depression? How could that coworker not know that man was capable of violence? How could a whole community not see that children were dropping out of school in record numbers? They just kept acting like everything was fine. How could any of them not see there was extreme need right there before them, right in front of their faces? How could we walk by cold, hungry, Disheveled homeless folks on the street, faces turned slightly away, and not do something. Is it because we don't care? Is it because it's so familiar to us that we just brush it off? Is it because we think that they should be able to work a job and, and, and make an income from themselves for themselves instead of begging on the street corner? Why indeed? Maybe it was because we didn't know what to do. Because we had so much going on in our own lives that we felt overwhelmed. Because anything we could do or did not do would only be a drop in the bucket. We can only do so much. How's this going to change their life? Because there are others who have more responsibility for any particular need than we do. Because we may feel people pretty much get what they deserve in life because we were too preoccupied with our own relationship to God to see the heart of God in the faces of the individuals right there in front of us. Maybe all of the above. A chasm has been fixed. The rich man, suffering in the flames of Hades, asked the Lord to send Lazarus to quench his thirst. But it cannot be done. Because there is in this chasm that cannot, there's a, there's, this chasm cannot be bridged. It's too deep. It's too wide. It's, it's, it's just too enormous. And so, who fixed that chasm? <laughs> Jesus fixed the chasm. But also, who created the chasm? God for punishment? Lazarus for payback? What if neither of those things is true? What if the chasm was fixed by the rich man himself? What if the chasm was the result of years of turning a blind eye to this Lazarus who was right in front of him all these years, all this time? 
avoiding relationships with him and others like him. The result of preoccupation with self, the result of always seeking to spend time with people like him rather than with those in different circumstances and with different needs. The results of focus on his own material world comfort and security. Do we see ourselves in this picture? Have we created a chasm? With our policies, our procedures, our laws and programs. We in American culture with our gated communities, separated neighborhoods according to economic status, education or race or origin, we with our propensity to let government or nonprofit agencies reach out across the chasm to the aid of those in need. We, Jesus teaches, are building chasms that eventually become too distant and too deep to bridge, either by those in need or by us. We simply no longer see Lazarus at the gate. We just ignore him. We ignore the people who are around us in our community who are in need of help because we believe somebody else is going to do it. But how was the rich man to know that chasm would have eternal consequences? How are we to know? If reaching across all the lines of division and need is so important to the Lord, why wouldn't God open our eyes and spirits to make sure that we could see it clearly? Open our eyes, take away our blindness to see the needs of others, to see where we can help, where we can lend a hand, where we can pick somebody up and encourage them. The dog cared more for Lazarus than the rich man did. I didn't know this, but dogs, when they lick your wounds, they're actually cleaning and healing you. They're getting the infections out. And this dog had more pity on Lazarus licking him and cleaning him than the rich man behind the walls, behind the gates. Lazarus just would have been happy with the crumbs off of his table, and yet the crumbs went to the dog. And Lazarus went hungry. He wasn't asking for much. He didn't need much. Can we spare some crumbs? Or can we do better than that? We can. We can do better. It gets even more amazing. The effects of this chasm for the rich man so misses the point that he does not grasp the outrageous or how outrageous it is to place the responsibility for comforting him and providing a warning to those like him square on the back of marginalized, hurting people like Lazarus. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue. The Lord recognizes the fact that it is totally unacceptable and he is incredulous. What? Lazarus says, are you kidding me? You and your brothers have all you have ever needed to see both the heart of God for the poor and the consequences of ignoring uh, the needs of those in distress. I've given you the law and the prophets. Haven't you read where you're not supposed to glean the whole field? You're supposed to leave some of the, the, the fruit, some of the, the, the wheat, some of the grain on the outside so those in need can come by and, and, and they can glean from that field some food? Don't you know that I have told you to provide for the, the widows and the orphans and those in need, the hungry, the poor? And haven't you heard 
My prophet Micah tell you that what the Lord requires is not sacrifices, but he wants you to do justice, to show mercy and to walk humbly with your Lord. If you're not going to listen to them, then what good is it going to do for me to go and speak to them? Did you catch the rising, the the person that that rises from the dead, from the grave? If they won't listen to me, how will they listen to him? How will they listen to that person? How will they listen to Jesus Christ, who has risen from the grave, if they haven't listened before? Jesus Christ has closed the the chasm. He has risen from the dead. He has come to share that we need to see God in the face of everyone, that everyone bears the image of God in them. Jesus has been saying all along, if you've been with us all month, you've heard God say there needs to be a change of heart. Jesus is saying there's something inside of you that needs to change. There's something inside of you that needs to be woken up. There's something inside of you that needs to see. See with your heart. Believe with your heart. The transformation is in the heart. It's on the inside. Then the poor will be visible. The hurting will be visible. The mentally ill will be visible. The orphans will be visible. Yeah. But we all know inspiring stories of those who have not turned away. Some of the heroes and the heroines of those stories are, may even be right here in this sanctuary. You know, those who organize or volunteer in homeless shelters. Those who work to see that all people get enough to eat. Those who tirelessly work for health care, for those who have no insurance, for those who move into distressed neighborhoods, those who move and embrace all people as their neighbors, those who fight for every child's right to a quality education. And the list goes on and on and on. Some of us did respond to the needs of homeless people as we served down at the Kenneth Butler, I think that's the name of it, Kenneth Butler Soup Kitchen. Where we could see the faces of people who were created in the image of God, who were being fed, who were having their physical needs met. So we're, we're, we're working on it. We're doing, we're doing something. They have overcome the chasm in this life and so surely in the next as well. And with them may we discern the challenge that comes to us from the words of Moses and the prophet and this parable of Jesus. For it is not enough to wonder or wonder if I knew then what I know now or even why didn't the rich man do something? The gospel demands, why don't we do something? Why don't you and I do something? Why don't we take notice, be moved with compassion, and seek to serve those in need as Jesus Christ did and does? For we are the hands and feet of Christ in the world today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us respond by singing this hymn, number 399, Take My Life and Let It Be. I, uh, I, I want to open up this as a time of prayer too. So while they're singing, while we're singing this hymn, if you would like me to pray with you, if there's something going on in your life and you'd like for me to pray with you, I, I'd be glad to pray with you. Just come forward. And I will 
meet you down here in the front and pray with you. But I just, I always put that out there because I, I never know what people are, are going through and, and what their needs are. But I always want to give, give room and space for the spirit to work and to move. And, and so if you feel so led to come forward to be, have prayer um, for me to pray with you, then please do so. But during this song, as we sing this song, take my life and let it be. <clears throat> You're encouraged to come forward if you'd like for me to pray with you. seated as you take your seats will the ushers prepare to come forward at this time um, as we prepare to give God back his tithe and our offering this morning
please stand. Generous God, you call us to freely give of our resources for the sake of your kingdom. You call us to give freely of our very selves as well. For the giving of our treasure disconnected from our heart of commitment to you has little spiritual power. We ask that you accept these, your tithe and our gifts, as a sign of our love for you, our faith in you and our commitment to you. Use them for your glory and to bless the lives of those in need, the neighbors at our gates, as well as those across the world. Amen. You may be seated. We now go to uh, our time of prayer in our worship service where we pray for the needs of our community and, and the prayers of the people. And uh, some prayer requests that have been lifted up to me that I'd like to share with you. Um, Broadway United Methodist Church congregation, uh, the pastor, uh, Aaron Hobbs, and the church staff in the neighborhood. Uh, there was a shooting at the church parking lot last week. And um, one of the people uh, passed away there on the premises. And so it um, was very traumatic. As you, can experience, as you can imagine. Uh, so please keep that church in your prayers. Also the families of the shooting victims, you know, those that were shot, please uh, pray for them and, and the shooter, you know. Um, also pray for um, Lucy Morlock, the daughter of Delaney and Adam. Uh, she broke her leg playing softball uh, this past week. Um, and so she's going to have to have surgery on it. She broke it so bad uh, that she's going to have surgery Monday. So please keep her in your prayers. Um, also, uh, Susan Cherry and Joe Christ, uh, keep them in your prayers. Um, and and the, the people that are already in your, uh, on your prayer list, remind, remember them in your prayers as well. Um, is there any others that we need to be aware of or lift up in prayer this morning that you'd like to share? If not, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Oh, gracious God, we just give you thanks and praise for another day. We know, Lord, that there are many that did not wake up today. There are many, Lord, that have not seen the sunrise. And so, Lord, we pray that you would be with those persons that are grieving the loss of a loved one. We pray, Lord, that you would be with those that are grieving the loss of a job, a home, like those in Puerto Rico, those that have lost a relationship. We ask you, Lord, to comfort them, to help them, to minister to them right now. Let them know that they're not alone and that, Lord, your word is true that you will comfort those that mourn. Lord, we pray for those that are sick in the hospitals and those that are recovering from surgeries, those that are at home ill and, and, and unable to get out of their beds this morning, those that are in the extended care facilities. We place them in your loving arms right now, O oh God, and ask you to touch them and heal them and minister to them right now. For, Lord, you are the great physician. We know you are a healer. 
We pray, Lord, for the, the doctors and the nurses and the medical staff all throughout our nation, Lord, that have been overwhelmed these past two years. We ask you, Lord, to give them strength to inspire them, to let them know that we appreciate them as you use them as an instrument of your healing. Oh God, we pray this morning for the countries that are torn apart by war. Especially we, we lift up Ukraine, Syria, Sudan, and other nations across the world. We pray, Lord, for the orphans, for the widows. And ask, Lord, that you would bless them, that you would comfort them, that, Lord, you would continue to feed them, clothe them, and house them, give them the shelter that they need. And, Lord, help us to be the hands and feet of Christ, of you in the world today. That through us, this will take place. That people will be ministered to. That people will be served. That people will be loved. Pour out your spirit upon us, O oh God. And heal us, those that are here in your presence this morning, either in these pews or online. Minister to our needs this morning whether they be physical, emotional, financial, whatever the need is, Lord, we know that you will minister to us. Lord, we are so thankful that you hear our prayers and answer our prayers. And now as the children of God, let us pray as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, those of you who are able, if you would please stand at this time as we sing our concluding song. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Street to street. 
Okay, beloved of Bradley. Beloved of Bradley. May we see. May we see. Bless and love. Bless and love. The beloved of God in need. The beloved of God in need. And respond as the hands and feet of Christ Jesus. And respond as the hands and feet of Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll sing the, the last chorus. <laughs> God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.